For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Walls Outdoors with me, Mike. Send you guys a bit of a review video on a brand new product from Deathmetic. This here is the Ascension TC401. So, Dometic, if you've not really heard them before, they've been around for a number of years, and to be fair, it's basically kind of camper. What they've sort of done is they've kind of split off the brands from 2020 when we had that sort of camper Dometic brand, and now it's just camper and Dometic. So, the camper is basically all be sort of uh, the price orientated stuff, and then the Dometic is their premium range with all well, every single feature they pretty much have to offer is in this collection. So the level of detail you see throughout this tent as we're going to go through on this little review video um, just kind of shows that in many ways. It's a small little things that just add up to make quite a big difference and are definitely more of a bigger talking point um, in comparison to other brands on the market. First and foremost, obviously, is look at it. It's quirky, it's different, it's something we've not seen before. And actually, to be fair, I really like it. I think the color scheme of the TC model works really, really well. And you can also get this in a polyester version as well. So everything in terms of size is the same, it's just the materials. Polycotton, I think, in the way it sits, the way it looks is just oozes class and premium. It just, it, yeah, it's, I just think it's size-wise, it, it, it's, it's a cracking little model, really. Um, but it's not so little. So polycotton, it's breathable. So you, it means that, in sort of a warm day, the weave can expand, allow the air to pass through, so it's a lot cooler on the inside. On the flip side of that, on those sort of colder days, the weave, weave contracts, keeps that warmth in, so you get the best of both worlds. You find that on a slightly, you know, in a, in a normal UK day, you will actually notice a temperature difference between a polyester and a polycotton, and it's more comfortable inside, just because it naturally breathes. One thing you find is in terms of lifespan as well, you have a longer lifespan with a polycotton tent, longer durability, and it's got a sort of canvasy style look, so you get, um, a bit more of a flushness, you haven't got synthetic kind of flapping noises as well. So it just sits much nicer, you haven't got as many creases. You know, okay, it's heavier and slightly bulkier, admittedly, um, but you offset that of what you wanted to. For me, polycotton is kind of in a league of its own, all the best parts are sort of canvas, but not as long to dry out. So what we've got here is a free zone tent. It's worth mentioning they also make a 601 version, so a slightly bigger version, but that's got its own separate video. So the 401 one we're here is basically orientated at four people, but it's a very, very generous four-person tent. So some may, other brands may even call it a five, but it's a true four. You've got sleeping, living, and then an enclosed canopy section here as well. So you get, like I said, the best of both worlds that you've got every section quite helpfully. Beautiful colour scheme with this kind of kind of nutmeggy kind of browny grey. I think it just it, yeah it just sits really nicely and like I said it it just like I said seems premium. Um, love it. Rain safe canopy on this side door as well, so you can enter in and out through the side door or have that fully mesh. And again, like I said, it's the it's the spec level you see on this is why it's the price point it's at. So you've got things like webbing storm straps front and back, uh, and, bit, and also you've got the reflected part as well. If that wasn't enough, you've got this webbing sort of single point pegging point. So you peg it out at one point, it pegs the base and the guide point all in one, making it quicker and easy to pitch. You can see from our own kind of at walls pitching and packing video how quick, simple and really it is. Admittedly, I've done it on the larger model, which was about sort of, you know, 13, 14 minutes. This model I've done uh, in sort of the, the slightly smaller size, uh, it took me only about sort of 10 minutes to pitch, which means you've got something like this, take it away for a week or even a weekend, and you've got the versatility that it's that simple to do. So that's kind of the joys of it. You've got really nice big PVC windows to get plenty of light in, uh, but then you've also got mesh uh, sort of above the window and then beneath the window, sort of to have that ventilation so you get a good circulation of air. Small little touches like this little webbing strap trim around that just pops the window, and also gives it a bit more of a an upper spec kind of appearance as well. And this sort of new kind of boxy shape means it's brilliant. You've got great interior headroom, really nice and big. And also you've probably one of the criticisms of kind of camper in the past was that the, the tent sort of sloped in. This is almost like the polar opposite in many ways that you've just got ultimate space means that every square foot you've got inside of it, you can utilize having tables and chairs nice and close to the side. Another unique feature about this is it's got a whole back storage compartment. So there's a back storage part that runs along the base. Uh, and we'll see that as we go inside in just a moment. Again, we've got webbing straps and a little aluminium pole, and that really helps to create that kind of back storage compartment, which we will, we'll come on to in just a second. The front door scenario is quite unique. 
fact that you've got obviously enclosed uh, fronts so you can zip that up and get that complete seal away from the elements when you wanted to. You've also got this sort of free position door so you can have it a third open, two thirds uh, or fully open. What you can also do as well is you've got additional zip pullers as well so you, what you can do is create, you can roll it from right to left or left to right. What you also find as well is that you know, if you wanted to, you've got little clip points on the inside just to kind of open that back. So we'll just open that back a little bit. And then obviously you would normally remove the pegging points. But you've got big PVC clear windows in here, but then you've also got curtains in the front. So again, you can get that kind of complete ultimate amount of kind of suction away. So if I just for the time being kind of roll that back, Obviously you would normally tuck it away, I'm not taking away the pain points. Suddenly you've then got this big nice open canopy, decent amount of depth as well, uh, and sort of a bit more versatility. So that works quite nicely uh, and gives you the ability to say like on a nice day, open up, sit out here with a table and chairs, relax. You've got a bit of protection from the wind and also the rain if suddenly you get a little shower, but you don't then affect your lovely nice sealed in ground sheet section. But let's talk for a few more features that the extension has to offer on the inside. So now we're kind of inside the Ascension, you can kind of get a bit more feel for the way that all the tent is laid out really. So like, so we'll start with sort of the awning section and work our way back through the tent. So with that enclosure front, you've almost got that sort of perfect sort of depth for a cooking unit or everything you'd like in here. And I think for, for me, in terms of size proportion wise, the 400 works better than the 600 or 601 I should say, just because I think in relation to width, in terms of depth, I think it's a bit smarter you know, great sort of area at the front here. You can open it up like we have, remove that, well, take that door also to the side, keep it all nice and tidy. You've still got great, nice PVC windows either side in the awning section, but you've also got that level of privacy. And that's the same when you see it, um, you know, in sort of the side windows. You may also look at possibly the uh, the Rototonga. Uh, that's, that's kind of a very similar uh, design but with an open front. You don't actually have the curtains in the front section which is what you get here. So again you can get that sort of complete privacy on the front panels but also the side panels and again the whole principle works so you can just simply unpop the, the point, zip it up and you get sort of pure clarity but things like you're talking the curtain itself are actually made out of polycotton which again is where other brands sometimes can find to make the product a little bit cheaper making out of polyester. So what one thing has been for certain is they've not compromised any points throughout this tent and you can still kind of use it kind of halfway as you can see here. So again, it just means you've got ultimate amount of flexibility to go all the way up or all the way to the bottom. And again, you've got this massive big storage pocket beneath it located here. So you can just tuck it in there out of the way and then it just pops on like so. Much easier, you're not tying a bit of cord, it's actually press studs, nice and easy. And then it's in that whole little pocket completely down there. So you've, you can, again, you're not trying to fold it in, into the bit of it, you just chuck it in there. It's in there, you haven't got to worry about it really. The divisional door between two sections can basically be put into almost like a, a third open or two thirds open. So, and one thing that's quite unique as well is that you've actually got a window panel built into all three sections. So if you wanted to completely seal that off, you can still have perfect visibility around everywhere. You haven't got to sort of compromise that. And then you've still got the zip up and down curtains in those sections as well, again, to sort of, make it as big or as little as you want it to. It's the finer details that you find that makes this tent what it is really. So things like we said, it's all about the webbing straps or pegging or the visibility guidelines, but it's more than nuts and bolts things where other brands might do something a little bit different. So for example, we're talking here, we've got little webbing um, straps for tying points. It's not a case of elasticated and then a little bit of a, a toggle point. You've got a physical buckle to open it all up and everything like that. So again, when you wanted to, if we do buckle open the top, buckle at the bottom, you can then sort of open up and you see you've got your panel there like so. Again, things like the actual zip pullers itself, you've got a really nice sort of Tobrone style uh, wedge so you can actually get a good handle on it and pull it and not have to worry about it. So things like that are also reinforced. All the zips are kind of, again, reinforced as well and there's a little kind of clip point as well. So when you want to have the panel in, in here, the weight's not purely on the zip. You can literally clip that in, zip that across and you're good to go. But things like kind of the, uh, the clip scenario makes a big difference. So again, if you're not the best at packing it away, you've got a big kind of oversized webbing strap and then you can just pop it in so tension it like we have here. Again, behind any sort of external door has its own mesh point as well. So the side door, which we saw with the brow canopy on the outside has a mesh part to it. So does the whole front one. 
So again, you can kind of get a complete barrier against essentially the bugs. So you can be in here, have a light on at night, and you know have the air breeze coming in through the front. The ground sheet, as we can see down, lips up and lips, well, folds down and folds up, and actually Velcros quite happily to the base of the mesh panel or the normal door. So you've got the flexibility that you can have sort of a, a trip-free walkway, to bring push chairs, prams, anything you need in here, wheelchairs, and you haven't got to worry about it, but you've got the flexibility, you can seal it as and when you want it to. Again, you, this door can be done halfway, so you can almost have it sort of half door, half mesh, or, and that's what they try and do. And it's things like, again, we're looking poly cotton material on the bottom, um, just again, not to kind of compromise, you know, what they're trying to do. And in many ways, you, there are, are some optional extras you can buy for the front of it. So you can buy uh, a, an additional front canopy and even a front mesh vegetable. And even things like the mesh vegetable is all poly cotton based. So it's, it's designed to look exactly like it. And it's, it's definitely premium and, and you can certainly see that. Other things that you see on this, you don't see in other models, things like your hanging point for a lantern. It's not just a bit of Velcro or, or a plastic hook. It's a metal carabiner, you know, and that's the same with every, above every single beam. So one, two, three, and four in there. So every beam has that option. So it's, again, details. The little, every point for a cable point is not, again, a bit of Velcro, it's a, a nice bit of webbing and then a popper. So it means that in theory, you know, you can go around undoing it, doing it all with one hand, nice, simply and easily. There's a bedroom you can buy also to go in the main sort of living area. So if you wanted to sort of accommodate an extra two birth bedroom, pop that up during the night time, sleep them, take it down and chuck it into the storage area we've got at the back. You've got a really nice new kind of sized carpet for it as well, and it's all tailor-made to it. In here, you've got bigger beams as well, so it's a slightly bigger diameter beam, again, for additional bracing, and it's up to, um, it's 12 centimeters, and you're up to 10 PSI. You get included a better pump as well, so you get a really nice strong downdraft pump, as well as additional pegs. So again, it's all these little things are just adding up. Obviously, a big open set side mesh door and a normal door with that brown south canopy, so you can enter and exit in there, regardless of what you want to do. And then in the other remaining panels, actually you've got one that side as well. So you've got doors either side, which again, gives you lots of flexibility the weather does change. There's panels at either side here, you've got a whole mesh part along the top. Again, it can be accessed and open and closed from the inside, so if the weather changes, you haven't got to worry about it. You just allow air to come in and out as you please. The PVC window, as we saw there, beautiful career, and actually it feels a really nice sort of thickness to it there. And then you've got your curtain and low level ventilation points. One thing I didn't mention on the outside is you can actually buy an additional annex. So if you wanted that internal, well, little bit of external storage section, there's a zip on the outside of this part here. You can buy an annex to go on there. You can look in our, the, the 601 version of this tent in the TC model. We've actually put that annex on. So it gives you a bit more idea about what you're looking in there. So you can always check out that video if you want to kind of cross-reference everything. In the main section now again, so one thing that comes is the bedroom scenario. So this is a very generous tent for four people. So much so, like I said, on the outside, you can almost be, call it a five. The reason they've done this is basically to create the perfect tent for a family of four uh, that has every single bit of space you need without being too big. I think the, the depth in the main living area is, is really great. You know, it, it's two beams, two bays, really nice and big. You can have a table and chairs in here, four people around here and be more than happily, even if you wanted to, because the door sort of scopes back this way. It creates this sort of dead end space on the left hand side for a cooking unit and then also a wardrobe, whatever you want to put inside. So that's your flow, that's your storage, and it works like really nice that way. Ventilation point above the point up here as well is also an airflow, and we've talked about low level ventilation. Bedroom section, you've got storage pockets built into the front of the inner. Again, poly cotton uh, inner tent as well to help with that breathability, but also that kind of premium feel. And you've got this really nice kind of baffle kind of part around there. And again, just makes it feel in keeping with the tent and look very much almost like a safari lodge. Internal height wise here as well, again, plenty of height room. I'm about six foot two, standing in the middle, no problem. And especially when you get to the corners, which is the key part, I can stand right up near to the edge and I'm perfectly fine. So it helps, even though it's a slightly smaller footprint, it still feels quite nice and roomy. One thing I neglected to mention about the beams is you've got a little Velcro part on the inside of here, and that's for kind of uh, campers sort of saber flexi lights. So it basically Velcro a little flexi light into there. You can have one there, one there, one there, all running off a single socket. So you can allow light to go directly down without having to worry about um, having multiple plugs running three different lights. It all can be interchanged. Comes with remote control as well. So again, it's all those kind of premium little features. 
really nice dark bedrooms as well. You've got um, essentially enough room for a decent sized bed in here and a good sort of depth. So it's about 225 deep, uh, around about 140 wide in here. So again, any air bed will pretty much fit in here. Divider between two sections, zip divider. So it feels like two separate bedrooms, but you've got that flexibility. You can roll that back. Actually, again, popper it back completely and have it as one big open bedroom. So if you wanted that kind of like ultimate roomy, spacious couples tent, Christ, this would probably tick that box, I would say. In here, you've still got features like pockets for storage. So you can put things like keys, phones, torches, that sort of stuff in there. So when you wake up at night and you need to go to the loo, you can easily access that quite happily. And a darker bedroom just kind of gives it a better feel. A little storage pocket down the bottom here as well will keep the bedroom in place. And what you've got, you find is there is a nice big uh, mesh panel in said bedroom. As you can see here, so you've got great visibility in that sort of, again, extra layer against the bugs, but a screen when you wanted to with the popper design. So like I said, it's all these little things that make a big difference. You've also got a slightly lower sculpted bedroom as well to sort of walk in and out of here, kind of as you need to. Now, one of the main things that makes this kind of very unique is the fact that you've got this back storage section. So we've got it closed here, and then we've got it open next door. This will suddenly allow you to declutter the main part of your space, chuck it all in that back section, and then suddenly, you know, you're utilizing and maximizing the main living area you have there. So things, for example, like the the bag it comes in. Just sort of literally go and live in there out the way. Bags, you know, anything you want to put in there. You always put little storage, little larders in there, a small little low one that will go in there. You can just about stand up in there to be fair because of the slope of where it is, but I'm still very much in the tent. But I'll tell you what, let's have pick the camera up now and have a little bit of a wander through. Uh, to kind of get a bit more better feel about the ascension. So, a bit more idea about the canopy depth there again. So I said, you've got a wide beam, great big windows, and then you've got this kind of two bay scenario. So as we kind of look in here, like I said, you've got loads and loads of space, the two side doors adjacent to each other, but you also get the visibility. So as, as we kind of look around, you can see great visibility around the campsite, checking on where you need to be with the kids. Um, and that works well. The oversized beams and with all the toggle points located in that carabiner in the middle. And you've got to see, you can see on every single beam, we've got the same scenario, as well as that sort of vent and low level ventilation point there. Bedroom scenarios, you're overlooking a nice dark bedroom with the back bit done. What you can do if you've got a slightly deeper bedroom, you bed, for example, you can just undo that little bit, poke your legs through the base there, and then you're in there like so, and you've got that little storage pocket. But there's also a clip located in the top corner. So what you can also do is kind of have a, um, a wardrobe pole in either side of the bedroom section, just to give yourself a bit more hanging space. And then this back section here, it's like a sort of, uh, almost like a bell tent in many ways. And you've got these nice big ventilation points at the back and that helps create it by the pole scenario. You can see how it kind of goes up. But, you know, you've got the bag can quite happily fit in there. You can chuck an awful lot back there to be perfectly honest with you. There is loads and loads of room and you don't have to access it as you can see where that door is completely sealed up. There's alternatively you wanted to. You've got that zip divider running through kind of the sections. Let's have a little walk around the tent as well, just to kind of get a bit more of a better feel. But you can see how kind of overly spacious it is. And the sheer kind of upright part of that beam. As we sort of walk through, again, you've got this sort of external zip flap you can see located kind of here. And that's going to basically allow you to connect that annex onto it as you see fit. And then it's got a little wardrobe pole at the back here. Well, so a little part pole. And it looks almost like a, like I said, a bit sort of bow tent-esque, but also like an old fashioned uh, frame tent in my opinion. Almost like an old relum. Uh, so it's quite quirky, quite nice. There's also a little orange point down here. And that's basically your fold marker. So you fold the back to that point. Um, and it gives you a perfect width to get in the back in the bag. Personally, I wouldn't fold it that way. As you see from our own kind of pitching packing videos, we do things a little bit differently. We find it works. Um, and you know, it's, it's obviously horses courses. You've got extra webbing straps on the top. So you've got four on, on there as well for that nice big vent at the back. And again, that little one's down the bottom. You've got the rain safe canopy pole and it can then just gives you more sort of clarity looking inside the tent with the low sort of level vent ventilation points. One thing I will mention as well, obviously is the little poppers on the outside. So 
all of the uh, pump up points are on each beam, so it's done individually. You can just pop it up, get to the valve much easily, and then you can keep it neat and tidy. And that way it just, it kind of keeps it at bay and looks a bit more sharper. So you haven't got a, a bit of saggy fabric hanging around the outside of it. Overall, I think definitely probably in terms of size wise, a lot more people probably go for the uh, 601 model on the TC, which you can check out as own individual video. But I really like the 401, just because I think size wise, in terms of portions, living, sleeping, and kind of the front canopy area, it works really well. Perfect sort of play of all. Brilliant fabric, looks great. Really high end level of features, you know, more so than the other brands on the market, but it's pricey. And you pay, I mean, you're paying for all these bits and bobs and you would expect it to be. It's got to sit above most of other manufacturers' tent ranges. It's going to be probably the most expensive polycotton tent of this sort of size on the market, but you are getting a lot, you know. Only one slight criticism is not a roller bag, but we sell roller bags on its own anyway. So, you know, you, you can get the tent that you want with every single feature you want, pay, I don't know, 70 quid for a bag just for as an afterthought, and suddenly you've gone from uh, an exceptional tent to next level first class, you know, and that's kind of what they try to create really. It's not being apologizing for giving so much, you know, individual and unique features around, but offers something very different and it's one we intend to have up on our indoor display showroom. So yeah, for more information, follow the link below, take you directly through to a website of all the lower prices. You've got all the optional lectures with the canopies, um, the mesh vestibules, the, you know, floor dimensions, pack sizes, pack weights, uh, spacing sides. It kind of gives you all the information you need as well as package deals and so forth. So have a look at that if need be, but let us know what you think as well. Have a little comment in the box below. And if you any more question queries, just contact us directly via email uh, or phone, of course. So yeah, that's kind of our little video review on the uh, extravagant new Dometic Ascension TC401.